My name is David Morley, and just in case y'all couldn't tell, I'm not from around here. <laughs> I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm one, I'm one of only five people in that entire city who's from the state of North Carolina. <laughs> so I talk funny there. But y'all all understand what I mean when I say y'all. Yes. I don't have any print handouts for you for this session, but I do have online handouts uh, that were made specifically for this conference. Uh, you'll find them on my website. If Jot down in your notebooks or your notes this URL. In fact, I think I've got it on the right-hand side of most of the slides. Landmark-project.com. Uh, this is my website. It's been up since 1995. It's the home of something called Citation Machine, which some of you might be familiar with. Also a tool called Rubric Builder and Slate, which is a web quest builder. These are all located there. And uh, when you go to this website, this is what it looks like. This is Landmarks for Schools. And I want to draw your attention to this menu right here that I've just highlighted in yellow. The second major item down in that menu says online handouts. And this is my online handouts page. And that's what I look like, those of you back in the back. Fine looking man. Isn't that a great picture? That picture represents at least 19 hours of computer enhancement. <laughs> I never looked at also, I wanted to draw your attention to a project that I've got linked here called the New Century Schoolhouse. This is an online project that I've been running since 1997, and it's a project for teachers. Basically, the New Century Schoolhouse is a virtual school building, 1950s or 60s style school building that's been totally gutted of all relics of industrial age education. It's an empty shell. And what I ask educators to do is to come in and adopt an empty room and repurpose that room for what you think needs to be happening there today to better prepare for the 21st century. If you're a middle school teacher, then you go over here and click the middle school. And here is the blueprint for the middle school building. Each of the rooms has a title. If it has a title, that means it's already been adopted. So if we want to see the West Wing, a room called the West Wing, we can go read this person's description of what he or she thinks should be happening, what teachers and students should be doing there to better prepare kids in the 21st century, and what needs to be in that room in order for those activities to take place. What kind of hardware, what kind of software, what kind of infrastructure, what kind of books, what kind of staff, what kind of wallpaper, you know, what needs to be in that room for those activities to take place. Each of the rooms also has an embedded discussion board so people can come in and visit your room and comment on your room. And their comments automatically get emailed to you uh, so that you can learn how other people are reacting to your room. If you want to adopt a room, then you have to find an empty one. And right now there are no empty ones on the first floor. So we're going to go to the elevator and click on the second floor. And here there are a number of rooms that have been adopted, but here's one that says adopt this room. So all you have to do is click that link and fill in the form uh, on, and describing what you think needs to be happening in that room to better prepare kids for the, for the 21st century. It's a place where we can collaborate together and dream about the education that we as professional educators know that our children need right now. Basically, what I'm asking you to do is to be futurists. And that's what educators are. That's part of what's at the heart of what we do. We're futurists. We're inventing the future. We're preparing our kids for the future. And this requires us, as, as professional educators, to consider, to think about the, 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 the life that our children are going to, because that's what we're preparing them for. So what I want to do to explore the, the, some, some aspects of the future is to take a futuristic workplace. This is an information edge workplace. We've got lots of information edge tools in there. But we're going to pick this apart. For instance, back there in the back, you see a telephone sitting on the, sitting on the counter back there. How many of you own a telephone that looks kind of like that, that plugs into a wall? How many of you own a phone like that? How many of you own a telephone that you can carry around in your pocket? Now raise your hand if you've given up that phone in place of this phone. I'm seeing more and more hands as I ask that question because people are discovering that that phone can be redundant to this phone that you carry around in your pocket. You go to Tokyo or Hong Kong, they don't have landlines anymore. It's all cell phones. And they're about half this size. 
In Hong Kong, they're about half the size. They wear it on a chain around their neck, and it's got a little wire that comes out of it that they stick in their ear, and they've got a little dangling microphone, and they're constantly in contact with each other. And it's revolutionized their culture in important ways because of the sense that you're always in contact with your friends and acquaintances and colleagues. You can tell when they're talking to somebody over their cell phone because their hand gestures become a lot more exaggerated. <laughs> My cell phone is web-enabled. How many of you have web-enabled cell phones? This is so cool. I've never done it before. <laughs> and, I, and I don't even know why, how, but this is so cool that I'm carrying the World Wide Web around in my pocket. So if this is where we're going, I'm going to cut the picture of the telephone out of our picture. Okay? No telephone in the workplace of the future. It's going to be personal. It's going to be personal technology where you carry in your pocket. Now, I want to share with you a statistic that comes from a study that was done at the University of California in Berkeley. Uh, the study was called How Much Information. And basically, they wanted to figure out how much information we had to deal with today. One of the findings of that study was that we will generate about one and a half exabytes of brand new information this year. One and a half exabytes. Now, I know what you're thinking. If I knew what an exabyte was, I'm sure I'd be impressed. <laughs> This equates to about 250 megabytes of information for every man, woman, and child on the planet. But the kicker is that only three one thousandths percent of that information is ever printed. That's three one thousandths of one percent of the information that we generate this year will be printed. The rest is digital. And that compels in me the question, how well are we preparing our students for a future where the information that they access will be digital and almost exclusively digital? How much are we still paper training our kids when we need to be white training our kids? If this is where we're going, I'm going to cut all the paper out of our picture. And while we're at it, let's just get rid of the books too. Cool, no more books. You don't seem very excited. Aren't you ready to give up your books? No, me, I love books. I've always got a book with me. I can't go to sleep without reading a book at night. Right now it takes me about two paragraphs. <laughs> I love bookstores. I love used bookstores. It's not about the smell of a used bookstore. I, I love books. But I tell you one way that I buy books, I go to a website called audible.com. Audible.com. And there I can shop for the book that I want to read. And I can select the book that I want and pay for the book online. And I can take delivery of that book online and download it onto my MP3 player so that I can listen to the book being read to me by an actor while I'm taking my cholesterol walks in the afternoon or while I'm driving to a workshop in North Carolina. Point is, we're going to be accessing our information in a wide variety of ways. And what's happening in our classrooms today should be reflecting that fact, that idea. How many of you have ever used one of these digital cameras, video cameras that you can set on the monitor of your computer and you can have teleconferences with people over the internet? How many of you have ever attended or taught an online course or attended a teleconference in front of cameras and a screen? You know, if this trend continues, we're not going to need the chairs in our office anymore, okay? Because we're going to be having our meetings online. Cool. What do we have left? We've got a computer back there. Now, if you listen to futurists, they're saying we're going to be wearing our technology in the future. We're going to be accessorizing with technology. Cool. Here is, these are called ring phones, or phone ring. This is a prototype. Basically, you, you, put, you put the microphone on your pinky and the speaker on your thumb, and you just make the international thumb gesture, and it's all the people. Cool things. Or GPS toe rings. They're connected wirelessly to your GPS device, which is in your pocket or hang on your belt or whatever. You, you dial in where you want to go and you start walking. When it's time to turn right, the rings on your right toe start vibrating. So you turn right. When it's time to turn left, ring on your left toe starts vibrating. So you turn left. You've got to be careful. You know you're right from your left when you put these things on in the morning. You get real lost. <laughs> They're still trying to figure out what it's going to do if you make the wrong turn. <laughs> Think about it. Uh, this is a picture that I took at the Media Lab at MIT a couple of years ago. 
This is the first prototype wearable computer. This is a jacket. It's a full computer. They made it out of clear plastic so you can see the circuitry in there. Wearing our computers. Are we, aren't you ready for that? Levi Strauss is currently marketing this jacket in Europe. It's got a built-in computer. It's got a built-in mobile phone. Built-in MP3 player. Built-in GPS device so you don't get lost. Or at least your jacket doesn't get lost. <laughs> Sleeve mounted control panel. Headphones tucked up under the collar. You pull them out and put them in your ear so you can, you can have your conversations or listen to your MP3 files. It's all tied together with the PAN. Y'all heard of LANs, local area networks? PAN is a personal area network. Here's a picture that I took from a fashion show site I hold. And I think she is that I took beautiful. Look at that. Head mounted display, hard drive on the belt, magnificent. <laughs> if this is where we're going, we'll cut the computer out of the picture. And there's not much left for the desk, so we'll take the desk out. And what do we have left? Almost nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly what we know about the future that we're preparing our students for. All, most, nothing. For the first time in history, our job as educators is to prepare our students for a future that we cannot clearly describe. We have always had a very good idea of what our children would be doing 10 years from now, 20 years from now, even 30 years from now, but not today. We don't know what the workplace is going to be like. We don't know the skills that they're going to need. We don't know what their lifestyles are going to be like because things are changing so fast. And the dialogue we need to be having as a nation, as a society, as educators, is what do children need to be learning today to be prepared for an unpredictable future?